Hi everyone, welcome to day 67. I can't believe it, we are almost done with this. Day 67 of praying through the Psalms. Today we look at Psalms 133 and 134, both of which are the final Psalms in that Psalter within a Psalter that we call the Songs of Ascent collection. So this first one of the last two is Psalm 133, and it was written by David. And in it, we can imagine the travelers singing this song as they finally arrive at the city, greeting their family and friends, and gathering together to worship God at the temple where they believed God's presence resided. Uh, in those days, God did not reside in each believer through the power of the Holy Spirit because uh, people were not clean enough. They couldn't get clean enough for that. So God still had to offer some sort of protection. So he lived in the in the temple and there was separation of the only person that could actually go into the holy of holies where god's actual presence was was the high priest once a year so there was still a lot of separation but this is as close as they can get so to, they're together they're amongst family and friends finally worshiping god as one big family, the children of God gathered together. And this is a joyous occasion. And the psalmist compares the bounty that comes from unity to two things. The oil used to anoint a priest, and in this case he mentions Aaron, who was the first of the priests. He was the first to receive such an anointing. And they would pour the oil on the head and it would run down, drip down through the beard and onto the collar and the top of the robe. So it didn't just stay in one place. That anointing stretched down from the top of the head all the way to the robe that Aaron was wearing. In a similar fashion, he describes the dew that falls on Mount Hermon. So Mount Hermon is a mountain up in the northern part of Israel. It is a true mountain. There's snow on the top of it. And from its base is where the waters of the River, river Jordan are formed. So the dew that flows there then enters into the Jordan River, which waters all of the land. So in a similar way, what begins at the very top trickles down to bless the rest of the land, the oil that begins at the very top of Aaron's head trickles down to bless and anoint the rest of his body. So the conclusion that we can draw is that unity is a blessing that does not just benefit the family or even the nation of Israel alone. When God's people worship in unity, it offers benefits to everyone. It's a trickle down effect. Um, the oil of, of worship pours out into the rest of the ancient Near East, we can imagine in the psalmist's words. And in a way, this becomes a corrective because we remember that many of the earlier psalms that they sung on their journey were lamenting over how difficult it was to live outside of the city, to be far away from family and friends, to be you know, strangers in a strange land where they were often persecuted for their beliefs. And now we see the reverse of that. From this unification and worship, there's going to be an outward flow, a ripple effect that's going to trickle down and out into the communities to which these pilgrims will soon return. And it's a beautiful image of what can happen for all of us, even in New Testament times, when we, as the body of Christ, are able to be unified in our worship and in our pledge to be God's hands and feet. Can you even imagine what that could look like? True unity amongst all denominations, uh, how glorious that would be and what a blessing that would be to the rest of the world, truly, just as the psalmist depicts here. And then the final psalm here in the Songs of Ascent is a benediction. It's a psalm of praise, possibly one of the last to be sung before the pilgrims began the long journey back. So we don't have, we kind of have right before worship starts and right after, but not the psalms that they would have used in worship because most of those are already included in the Psalter. So these are the really the songs of the journey, the songs of the journey there and then preparation for the return trip.
So the first two verses would have been sung by the congregation as a blessing for the priests who ministered at the temple. And then in return, the priests would have sung the final verse as a blessing for the rest of the congregation. And these words serve as a lasting reminder for the pilgrims. As they're headed home, these two truths stand out. The Lord is in Zion, and he is the creator of all things. In other words, God is sovereign, God is holy, and God is powerful, worthy of our trust and praise. So when might we pray these Psalms? Well, Psalm 133 could be used to pray either for unity or when we are gathered in unity. So if we're praying for unity, which I'm going to do today, we can turn these words into a petition. Um, please God help us to experience such unity. If we're praying in unity, in other words, whenever, wherever we gather to worship, whether it's at a worship service or at the beginning of a Bible study or any, any other instance, fellowship, a, a Christmas party for brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever it, it may be, um, we can pray this, uh, recognizing, of course, that as New Testament believers, uh, this power and unity comes from the Holy Spirit. So even, you know, here it's relegated to physical presence. They all have to be together to experience this unifying power. But with us, the Holy Spirit resides within us. And so we can be unified supernaturally when we praise to our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. It, it's even more glorious because we have the power of the Holy Spirit living within us. And then we might pray Psalm 134 as a blessing at the conclusion of a worship service or again, any kind of gathering of God's people. We can also turn this into a petition as well. Um, this is a good one to add to your rotation because it will remind you to pray for those who particularly serve in set apart ministry. Um, we are all ministers. We are all part of the priesthood of believers. We're all called to make Jesus Christ known, to be his hands and feet, to follow after him. But certain people serve in what we call set apart ministry, the ministers to the ministers, if you will. Uh, these are your pastors, worship leaders, uh, people that, you know, are working inside the church for the most part. And they, they need your prayers. Um, Satan sees them as a place of attack. Uh, a lot of times people in set apart ministry have to deal with pretty significant spiritual, spiritual attacks from some time to time. They need your prayers. Um, it's so important and so necessary. So if we add this to our rotation, it just helps us to remember to pray for them. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to combine these into one prayer and uh, pray for unity and pray for those who serve us and set apart ministry. So let us pray. Gracious God, indeed, it is good and pleasant when your people live together gather together, worship together, pray together, serve together in unity. And God, we recognize that in our modern times, unity is hard to come by, Lord. Not only are we split into many different denominations, but within denominations, battles wage, sometimes over significant things, God, and sometimes over things that probably are not that significant. And God, it's hard to sort it all out. And it is heartbreaking. And it is damaging, Lord. And yet we know that you are sovereign, you are holy, you are on your throne. The church will not fall. You will not let your purpose be defeated. So God, we can trust that you will keep us upright, even when it feels like we are breaking apart. Lord, help us to seek unity, to desire unity, to search for it, to reach for it, to work for it. God, bring us together, unified under the basic truths of our faith, that you love each and every one of us, that each and every one of us matters, that your grace is for every single person, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. He is the one that we follow. He made a way for us to be united to you, to be rendered holy and clean, to be forgiven for sins, God, and to one day get to live with you in your eternal kingdom. In fact, it's a kingdom we can enter into here and now. And God, our call is to go forth 
to make disciples by bringing people into community and by teaching them about you. And Lord, in that we can be unified, even if we approach it in a different way, God. So help us to regain that sense of unity that is so precious, so precious that it doesn't even just help us, God, but it flows out to the rest of the world, like oil running down the beard of Aaron onto his robe, like the dew that trickles down from the top of Mount Hermon and flows into the Jordan River and out into the rest of your promised land. God, may we experience such unity, not for our own sake, not so that we can point on ourselves and say, look how good we are. God, is that we can point to you and show other people your grace and your mercy and the power and might that you have to bring people together. And so, Lord, as we close out this prayer, we pray a blessing for those who serve you in set-apart ministry. God, we know that they are prone to spiritual attacks they struggle mightily. The work is never ending, God. Their love for you is great. And we pray that you would keep them under your wings of protection, God, that no weapon formed against them would stand, that, Lord, they would be bold in their witness, that they would stand firm on the foundational truths of our faith, that they would hold out the word of God as the hope and the light and the life to be had, that they would show others the way to Jesus Christ, that they might follow him in truth all the days of their lives. And God, we pray for all of your children, all of our brothers and sisters, for ourselves, all across this world, God. May we receive your blessing so that we can turn around and extend that blessing to others. May we remember that you are on your throne, no longer just relegated to Zion, to the temple in Jerusalem, God, but you reside within each one of us through the power of your Holy Spirit. We can trust you. You are trustworthy. You created this universe, and yet you know every single one of us intimately. You know our needs before we even give voice to them. And God, your promises are true and they never fail. They will never fail. We are all journeying towards you to home. So God, help us to do it well. Bless the road before us. Make our path straight. Give us guidance and wisdom and direction, God. Give us your power and your might that we might ask in your glory and reveal that glory to others. We love you, Lord, and we pray this in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.